and also themes and this is this may be surprising to some of you are not something that kind of pops out at us and shows us our findings it's not something that we look at and we understand what we found all of a sudden which is kind of something that most people think about the themes themes are the representation of our findings we have to know what our findings are so in this video i want to talk about thematic analysis and specifically the reasons why you're stuck the reasons uh, why you're finding it hard to find your themes why you can't find your themes uh, each of these three reasons that I will discuss have been addressed by me in, in the different videos that I posted at, at different points uh, before. So whenever that is the case, I also link to these videos and I do encourage you to go and explore these videos if you feel that what I'm talking about applies to you. Because in these videos, I'm much more detailed about how to fix it. But here are the three main reasons, the, main, uh, the most common reasons why you may be stuck, why you're uh, you can't find your themes. So the reason number one why you can't find your themes is simply because they are not there. <laughs> this is not good if this is the case, but fortunately this is not that common. So don't worry, uh, this is not that common. But what do, do I mean they are not there? So of course, as you know, at the core of any study, any study, any findings specifically or any data analysis, uh, is uh, data that helps to answer the research questions. We have to collect the data, that's how we develop a study, we, we come up with research questions, we develop uh, some instruments to, to gather data that will help us answer the research questions. And, and uh, sometimes what may happen, for many different reasons, is that simply your data does not help you answer your research questions. So if, for example, your, your, your study involves interviews, uh, perhaps your interview guide was just not developed in the, in the right way, designed in the right way to answer the research questions. Uh, again, it, it's understandable, people don't have experience in doing that, so sometimes they may just ask wrong questions. Sometimes they maybe they wanted uh, their interview guide to be too open, they just let their participants um, speak, because that's another approach and some people did. But you have to be careful with that. So they let their participants speak and every person talked about something different and actually nobody really talked about what you needed them to talk about to answer the research questions. Another reason sometimes people change the research questions which is again fine provided that you can still answer them. So you either change your research questions before you actually go and uh, gather the data or you actually or you specifically change the research questions because you realize that this is what you can actually answer based on the data. So there are many reasons you have to be careful with that, but that's another reason. Maybe you change the research questions. Any other reason. Uh, at the core of every study, like I said, every findings, for the findings to be there, they have to be there. They have to be in the data. So sometimes you may struggle and struggle and struggle and you can simply not find the, the themes or develop the themes that you need for your study because of the way the instrument was designed. I do have a, a video, I do have several videos, I'll link to some of them, I'll put some in the comments in the description. Uh, so do have a look, I have videos about developing interview guides, I have video, videos about uh, conducting the interview, that's very important as well. I have a whole course, uh, online course about conducting an interview study, where I address every single aspect of interviewing. So developing interviews and conducting interviews and and uh, addressing common challenges during during the interview. So that's very important. You have to make sure that you have the data that will help you develop themes. So that's simple as that. But like I said, this is not very common. So fortunately, this does not apply to you. This is probably the most serious problem uh, of all three reasons that I'm discussing in this video. And, uh, and the second uh, reason is a little bit less serious, but it's still pretty serious. Uh, and that reason is that your coding was not done uh, properly in the correct way. So codes, as I also addr address this problem, address this uh, issue in many videos, codes are the foundation of, uh, of the analysis. Uh, the whole reason uh, we do the coding is to develop themes. You cannot develop themes, you cannot find themes without the codes. Codes are a way to break down the data and really understand that data because otherwise you cannot uh, you cannot develop themes in a way that would be convincing and valid because you can't possibly remember every single thing 
that every single person in your study said. So that's why it's important. It's important, as I often say, to be very detailed to your coding because essentially you're developing a table of contents of your data. Your codes describe your data. They should be detailed. And based on these codes, you are developing themes, uh, which is something I'll come back to in point or reason number three in this video. But it's absolutely crucial that you have that, that foundation, you lay that foundation, you have a good detailed coding. Sometimes, again, you have the right not to be experienced. You may have you have you may have made mistakes. Maybe you don't have enough codes. Sometimes you may have a handful of codes after you know coding more than a handful of interviews, which is usually an indication that there is a problem. Maybe you are trying to be too abstract, too interpretive, too theoretical uh, uh, in your coding. So rather than using codes that are simple descriptions and summaries of your data, you're kind of thinking ahead and trying to develop something that's more like a like a theme. So again, if that happens, you may have missed so much in the data and you probably have to go back and, and recode it. Again, something I addressed in several videos, so feel free to to watch these videos about how to code. I have a whole series of videos on this topic. By the way, before we continue, I just wanted to remind you that I offer all kinds of services that will help you develop and plan and implement your research study, including uh, Zoom uh, sessions, Zoom tutorials, one-on-one -on -one tutorials uh, to address data analysis. So what happens, these are my favorite probably, what happens is that we meet with a student online, We uh, you'll tell me about your study, You'll screen share if there is a need, you'll show me what you've done and how you've done it. And I'll offer suggestions, I'll offer feedback, I'll ask you questions, we'll be brainstorming uh, and trying to together jointly understand your data and understand the ways to, to move the analysis forward. This is something I do every single week. These are probably the most popular sessions that we have. And every time the students come out of these sessions really happy because they, they experience the moment where they 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 have clarity as to what to do next. So so like I said, uh, if that's something uh, you're struggling with, if this video doesn't help you, if you feel that you need more tailored support, more individual support, feel free to reach out. I'll I'll uh, post the links under this video. And finally, the third reason, also extremely extremely common, uh, you do have the right data, so the right interview guide and everything. You do have the right coding. And now you're stuck. Now you're stuck. How do I get this to the level of themes? And the reason is you lack clarity about what your findings are. You lack clarity about what your findings are. You lack clarity about what uh, what you want to present, what your story is, what the narrative that you want to present and build are going to be. And again, I address this thing, uh, this concept in many videos. And I explain that this is not always that obvious. However, Themes are not something that emerges. Themes are something we develop. And also themes, and this is this may be surprising to some of you, are not something that kind of pops out at us and shows us our findings. It's not something that we look at and we understand what we found all of a sudden, which is kind of something that most people think about the themes. Themes are the representation of our findings. We have to know what our findings are in order to build these themes because they are our tools for presenting the findings to our reader. So how do we know the findings? We know the findings from coding. So again, what I said before, we need a good coding structure. I very often say that codes are like our table of contents of our data. They are our table of contents of our data. They are showing us our data and explaining to us, here is everything that you have in this data. And it is our responsibility to look at these codes and look at our research questions and then think and reflect what do I know now that I didn't know before the study? What are these codes teaching me and how can I answer my research question? So what are my findings? That's the clarity that you need. And I explained that in the video that I posted very recently. There is absolutely no physical way or there is no physically, physically there is no way, whatever, whatever you want to, you want to, call it or how you want to structure that sen uh, sentence, but there is no way for you to develop themes if you don't have that clarity. You have to decide, you have to look at the code, you have to look at the research questions, sometimes switch the computer off, just go for a walk, whatever, just you have to decide first what it is that you learned from this data. And the codes, again, will be something that helps you decide. And once you've decided, 
you're going to turn back to your data, to your codes, and start organizing them, rearranging them, renaming them, and, which is very important, deleting lots of them. Without that, uh, that clarity, without this clarity, you don't have enough confidence. There is no way for you to know which codes are going to be deleted, which codes are going to stay, which codes are going to go. And chances are, if you've been doing everything right, that you have lots of codes. So, so you do have to reduce that number. But for that, you have to have that clarity. So that's the main, uh, the, the second, the third main reason why you cannot, you're struggling to develop your themes because you're you don't have you don't have that clarity and maybe your expectations about how these things happen may also be wrong so this is it i hope that you learned something new please like the video if you did and share it with others comment if you have any questions or or comments that you want to make and also don't forget to watch this video it's a series in a series in which i explain how to take coding all the way to to your themes so from codes to themes how do we do that? I'm really detailed in this video.